tonight's second feature on the CBS Lake Movie. No one person is as important as the organization itself. The organization? What do they organize? Gambling, extortion, murder. Angie Dickinson guest stars. It's organized murder. Farsi. Well, if it is, it's manslaughter, too. You talk to Ramsey one more time, and your boy gets what your husband got. Richard Boone takes on the mob as Heck Ramsey. soldier but unfortunately not very intelligent you knew that I only knew that he had a violent temper which was stupid that stupidity cost him his life however my beloved nephew I have no fear that you will make the same mistake thank you sir want to control this little town in Oklahoma territory as a, let us say, a, a circuit a connection between Tulsa and Santa Fe. You, uh, you realize the importance of your mission? I do. be a way to start a fire. <coughs> Are you saying this fire was started deliberately? It could be that. Arson. Well, if it is, it's manslaughter, too. You gonna tell her now or wait until you're sure? Judd, I don't know what to tell her. Want me to tell her? No. I got to talk to her anyway, but I thank you. Well, I guess I'd better better be going, but if there's anything I can do, you know, just see him. What do you think? Stay here and keep looking, hmm? I will. See you.
that's uh, some bad kind of accident. It might not have been an accident, love. What do you mean? Somebody might have set that fire. Why? Oh, why would anybody? Oh, God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Yes, you can. Nick, I got something I want to talk to you about. Doc, uh... Jake Kirby's body now. Where's that? Oh, I sent him over to the mortuary. Got something here in the latest police digest. Did you find anything? Yeah, found this here advertisement for a doc. I am talking to you as a doctor of medicine. Now, did you find anything in Big Jake's body that might give us a lead? Only that he's pretty badly burned. I don't know, maybe I need new glasses or something. I, I saw it here just a minute ago. A very interesting advertisement. Oh, for heaven's sake, here it is on the back page. Coin-operated punching bags. 25 smackers apiece will earn you up to $10 a week. What are you talking about? I'm talking about getting me one of these coin-operated punching bags. Put it up right outside the barber shop. Says here's one of the biggest money-making propositions ever offered. You'll need a license for it. What for? The law. How much is that going to cost me? $10. $10? That's a week's profits. And it's paid for yearly. Also, if it becomes a public nuisance, we can confiscate it. You guys sure make it rough on a fella. But I can't resist this one. Rosenfeld Machine Company, 587 Hudson Street, New York, New York. <laughs> Any idea who started the fire? Not yet. Well, the only evidence I could get off the body is in this envelope here. There was some... Uh, Dried blood under Jake's fingernails, along with some bits of black hair and some skin fragments. You've been using my equipment? Yeah. Hmm. Well, now I want you to know that that equipment is mine personal, not police issue. I didn't think you'd mind. I wouldn't have minded if you'd asked me. Boy, right, if that's the way you want it, I won't touch it again. Well, that's not what I meant. Well, and then just to hell with it. All right, anyway, what I did find out indicates that Jake was putting up a desperate fight. Which he lost. Yeah. Heck... What was Jake's financial status? Well, usually busted. Well, where did he get his equipment, his rigging? I don't know. Two, three years ago, he couldn't borrow the money to buy a used casing. I'm going to take uh, $10 out of the petty cash fund. What for? Well, Ann Kirby ought to have a decent dress for the funeral. I'll sign a chit for it. Chit isn't necessary. Charge it up to miscellaneous. Honeymoon, and they be back when they're back. See anything you like. Uh, oh, 
Oh, good day. Hello. I'd like to see something simple for evening. Yes, ma'am. We just got some new styles from Chicago. I'll get them from the back. Something special for someone special? Well, not exactly. May I? Does that give you a better idea? Yes, ma'am, that gives me a much better idea. You're, uh, Deputy Chief Heck Ramsey, aren't you? Well, uh, how do you know? I'm Sarah Lee Detweiler. How do you do? I've been wanting to meet you. You have? Well, I'm glad to know that. Am I embarrassing you? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, but I will get over it very quickly. <laughs> ma'am, would you like to try these on? Oh, in a moment, please. Uh... I've been here, um, oh, a little over a week now. I have closer to two weeks. Then you have noticed. Miss Detweiler, you are a most noticeable woman. Thank you. It's a, it's a charming little town. I, I feel almost at home already. Mm. Well, uh, in the uh, interest of uh, not being disrespectful, but hospitable, uh, would you take supper with me tonight? Well, I have the feeling that I tricked you into that. Well, I thought I was being a tricky one. Now, you're <laughs> staying at the big hotel. Until I can find more permanent quarters, yes. Well, that's fine. Now, you just uh, give me your room number and... I haven't even agreed to dinner yet, Mr. Ramsey. Ah. Uh, well, I guess my fond hopes just exceeded my poor hearing. Very, very well said. Uh, I do have to talk to you about something more serious. Um, perhaps we could have a drink at the hotel. Well, no, perhaps. Six o'clock. That'll be fine. Ah. Uh, oh, have a good day. Uh. Now, uh... Could you get this out to Ann Kirby uh, and wrap it up uh, all fancy? Sure, Mr. Ramsey. Want to include a card? Well, just put on it uh, from your friends. Well, Mr. Ramsey, what can I do for you? How much you asked for this case? Oh, it runs about uh, a little over a dollar a foot, delivered. You sell a load of this to Big Jake recently? Yes. They sent me about Jake. Hmm. How much that come to? Oh, let me see. Uh, around uh, $2,700. You gave him that kind of credit? Oh, come on, heck. I mean, I like Big Jake and all, but uh, I don't like nobody that much. <laughs> he paid cash? Yes, he did, cash. Where the hell did he get the money? Well, heck, I don't ask customers that kind of question. Well, did you sell any other big loads recently? Uh, yeah, a couple. Who? Uh, let me see. Uh, well, uh, Dave Callahan bought a whole bunch of it, but... Two weeks ago, and uh, Jim Masters bought along about the same time. Callahan's working that section south of the Shepherd Ranch, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I think so. Say, I know that you are fighting that pit bull against all comers on Saturday night. Mm. You didn't exactly fight me, you know. Uh... Well, I just want you to know that setting one dog to fight another is against the law in this town. Hmm?
bags are awful heavy. May I help you in the hotel with them? No, thank you. I think I can manage. Here. This is for you. Thank you. Sir, did you make a mistake? This is a $20 bill. New Prospect Police, I want to talk to you. About what? Your operation. It's doing just fine. I don't need any help. I don't need any talk. Hold I told you to hold right there. Callahan, put that rifle down. I just want to ask you some questions. About what? You heard what happened to Jake Kirby. Yeah, I heard he died in a flame-out. That's half of it. The flame-out was no accident. Well, that's got nothing to do with me. Well, could be it does. You see, just a few months ago, Jake Kirby didn't have a cent, then he found some money to wildcat his will. Just like you. Well, that was his good luck, just like me. Well, the chances are that the man who gave him the money is also responsible for Jake being dead. That don't mean beans to me. Who backed you? Well, it's none of your business, that's for sure. Why Jake Kirby died is my business. Well, then, you just get to it, Ramsey. Because I ain't got nothing from you. Now, hold it right there. This is my property, and I got every right in the world to protect it. Well, you can't shoot a law officer doing his duty, and you don't even have any right to threaten that you will. Now, who gave you the money? Who? There's some city fellow, and I haven't seen him since. What was his name? Well, he said it was Wilson, but... I didn't think it was, and I... Well, I didn't care. Why did he give you the money? Well, for... For half my operation, I... I had to sign a paper. Where'd he go? I don't know. I... I haven't seen him since. I... Well, it was either that or nothing. I'm a... I'm about to lose the lease on this place. What'd he look like? Well, he was... Maybe medium build. He had kind of heavy eyebrows. He... He had, he had a scar over his eye. All right. Look, I wasn't supposed to tell anybody about this at all. Yeah... Jake Kirby didn't tell anybody either. You hear Kid McCoy's back on Broadway? Where's he been? Where's he been? Fighting in Europe. Says he's in great shape, ready and willing to take on the winner of the Jeffries Fitzsimmons go. Fought in England. Claims he knocked out two guys in one night. Hot out there. Yeah, they say it's gonna get hotter. I put some of this lilac water on your face. Lilac? What? It's only a nickel more than the witch hazel. Now, wait a minute now. I'm going out with a lady, and I don't want to smell like I just come from a fancy house. Well, if she's a lady, she shouldn't recognize the smell. Mm. Oh, hi, Scroggins. Hi, Doc. What's the problem? My leg. Which one? The one you made for me. It doesn't fit. It's longer than my real one. Oh, it's that damn green wood I've been using. Come on, I'll plane it down a little more. Well, what is the latest rumor? Well, if it's true, it may answer the question of where Jake got that large sum of money in cash. You know a wildcatter named Fredericks? Yeah. Well, Fredericks claims that Jake was away from his place for about a month. Where'd he go? He says he didn't know. You believe it? I don't know. Something doesn't smell right. Oof. You sure do. Uh. Good evening. Oh, my good Lord. Good evening. Wouldn't you be more comfortable sitting down? Hello. 
Sue, what would you like? I'd like three solid ounces of sour mash bourbon. <laughs> I'd say, Mr. Lady, now, where did you learn to like sipping whiskey? Oh, where they first started making it, Tennessee. We couldn't afford our fancy manners, but there was always a bottle of bourbon and fine-blooded horses for my daddy and his friends to enjoy. And were you one of his friends? The best. He even gave me his best horse on my 16th birthday. I named him Prince. He was anything but that. He was the meanest, toughest, most stubborn animal that ever lived. And I loved that horse. In a way, you remind me of him. Uh, well, is that a compliment? It was meant to be. Uh, well, here's to Prince and to your most beautiful self. Maybe you better reserve some of that opinion until you get to know a little more about me. Oh, what should I know? I think there's trouble in your town, Heck. What kind of trouble? Serious trouble. You won't tell me about it? Not here. Yeah. Where? Um, where I think the trouble first started. I'll need a horse to ride. That can be arranged. I'll need a few minutes to change. All right. Mind if I cut? Well, there is cards. Suit yourself. What are the stakes? Double or nothing. Once for the drinks. And once for the entertainment. Sure. It's getting a little boring in this town. But why don't you just move on? I got business. Friend, your business better be cleaner than your cards. that just arrived in town. I want to know where they came from. And now I need to borrow your horse. Only for police work. But what if it's for a woman? Come on. Come in. Wanted to talk to me? You got something to say? Yes. I don't like seeing you make a jackass of yourself. You mean the cards? We're not here for games, stupid. Hey, look, I don't like being called stupid. What would you call that move you made at the bar? Brilliant? I was bored. I made a mistake. I'm sorry, okay? Okay. In fact, maybe I should even thank you. For what? Well, if it hadn't been for your stupidity, I never would have realized that Ramsey was that smart. On the other hand, you made him notice you. That hiccup. So what? So not good, Gus. Not good. Well, I said I made a mistake. I'm sorry, okay? Okay.
novel I was telling you about, it was there. When was this? Uh, three days ago. I had gone riding and I took the same trail out from town. What time of day? Morning. It was probably about eight o'clock. And what trouble did you see? The man. I assume he was the same man who owned the oil rig and the house. He was huge. I, I couldn't see his face clearly. He was having a little talk with another man. Now, Sarah, you say you saw trouble. Jake Kirby talking to another man doesn't sound like trouble to me. Easy. You stay put. I don't know what I'm doing. Hey. Right. Maybe I can help you if you tell me what you know about Jake's death. I'm scared. Of what? I got a note. What did it say? Annie. Annie, you got to tell me, and you got to tell me now. I think the note came from a man that, that Jake was doing business with. Uh, uh, Sarah, this is, uh, Annie Kirby, Sarah Lee Detweiler. How do you do? What kind of business? I can't say that Jake kept his business problems to himself. Well, how many times did you see this man? Twice. Three times, maybe. But I never talked to him. Uh, he, uh, Jake and him would uh, meet out in the work shack. Well, would you recognize him if you saw him again? Yeah. Well, describe him. I'd say he was in his late 40s. Built, uh, kind of chunky, bushy eyebrows. He had a, a one eyebrow, the le the right one. Had a scar through it. Uh, his whole face was kind of thick looking. Like he might have been a fight at once. Sound like the same one who made the deal with Dave Callahan. Hmm. How's that compare with the description of the man you saw out here? I couldn't describe him better. Hmm. You'd be frightened? Riding back into town alone? Yes. But I will. I thank you. Appreciate it if you stop by the police station and uh, tell them I need a constable out here. Stay with Annie and her son. Anything else? Yeah. Be careful. You too, Heck. Good night. Come on. Annie, you got any coffee in there? I'll make a fresh pot. You better. We got a few things to talk about. Oh, it is lonely without you, Charles. But through the years, I've learned to live with loneliness in the hope that someday I could be as proud of all the family as I am of you. And 
And at the risk of repeating myself too often, I caution you once again that your mission is of extreme importance. You must search first for a leading town figure, a man that people love and respect. I know you will find that man when you do, and he understands. Then the others will fall in line. Having you here, especially tonight, makes things a lot less painful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you go out of town recently? Um, about a month ago, yes. Or how long? Uh, I can't say exactly. Uh, about three weeks, I think. Where do you go? I don't know. Jake didn't like being asked questions. It was business. That's all he'd say. That seems strange to you. Yes. I knew he was upset. About what? Money. Oh, he knew sooner or later he'd make a strike, but... He'd lost credit. He was losing confidence in himself. Well, do you think he made a deal for the money? I think he did, Heck. I think it all has something to do with this. Yanny. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. It's so hard. Jake never lied to me in his entire life. Oh, well, he didn't lie about the trip. He just wouldn't talk about it. That seemed strange to you? That Jake had come up with seven, eight thousand dollars in three weeks? He said he'd gone into business with some very rich oil men. I knew there was something wrong. It was vague. He was... Irritable, restless. He drank a lot more than he used to ever. But the, the money that he got uh, from these uh, oil people, do you think it was dirty? I don't know, Heck. Yeah. I, I, I swear it's great, I don't know. Oh, right. now. How and when did you get this threatening note? It slipped under the door. How come you didn't hear them? You heard me way out there. It must have been delivered, I, I suppose, when when I took Frank to town this afternoon. When I got back, it was under the door. Well, why did you leave the house? Annie. Why did you go into town? I had to make Jake's funeral arrangements. Yeah. You lose the best man on earth and then get a cold note telling you to keep quiet or you and your son will be dead. It's a constable on the way. He'll spend the night here tonight. As soon as he gets here, I'm going back into the station. And Annie, please try not to mistake him the way you did me.
Council's holding a special session the first thing in the morning with that fella from Detroit, uh, uh, Charles Clobel, a lawyer. <clears throat> you find out anything more about him? Well, I wired Detroit police. Well, uh, I'm going home. Oh, so, uh, heck, mm. that lady went riding with earlier. Mm. She said she wants to see you as soon as you got back. But this hour, she said no matter how late. I don't uh, have anything to drink. I don't need anything to drink. Is Mrs. Kirby all right? For the time being. This man that she described, the one you saw with Jake Kirby, what's his name? I only knew him as Mike. He and my husband were... I'm a widow. And what did your husband have to do with all this? Well... He and this Mike were, uh, they were advance men for the organization. The organization? What do they organize? Gambling, extortion, murder. And your husband was one of those. Well, I didn't know that when I married him. He died protecting their secrets. It's their kind of uh, code. That's why I left Detroit. I was afraid they thought I knew more than I did. Well, then you didn't... Uh just accidentally wander into that dress store today. But I didn't need any clothes, if that's what you mean. When I saw this Mike in town, I was afraid they were after me. Well, did he see you? I don't think so. You sure about that? No, I can't be sure. That's why I'm frightened. You have any idea if he's living here in town? I don't know. Well, why didn't you tell me about it right away? Because I didn't know you right away. Heck, they buy people, people you wouldn't suspect in a million years. People like you, heck. <laughs> I'm talking about lawmen, judges, even mayors. You don't know what you're up against. What am I up against? The organization. It's not just one man or a group of men. It's like a government with their own laws and, and their punishments for people who don't fall into line. Well, underneath all that fancy talk, you're just saying they're a bunch of thieves and killers. No, you don't seem to understand. They are businessmen and congressmen, lawyers and accountants. Somebody in Detroit sends a telegram and somebody in Denver is dead. Huh. You want me to quit on this? Yes, I do. And run away like you did. I'm not that important. Well, neither am I. Now, if we're both going to run, we might as well run together. Well, you seem to prefer to take this as a joke. Is that what you want? Frankly, I'd like you to tell me how I can help to put the town of New Prospect on the map. Well, as long as we're daydreaming, why not shoot for the moon? Why not make Oklahoma the next state in the Union? Uh, I'll go a yeah, step further. Yeah, How about Judd White as the first governor of the state of Oklahoma? Yeah. Well, Mr. Clavel... Please. I prefer you call me Chuck. That goes for the rest of you as well. <laughs> All right, Chuck. Let's put it on the line. I'd be a bald-faced liar if I said I didn't want some of that big city money circulating around here in New Prospect. However, and there's always a however, isn't there? If there isn't, there should be. <laughs> <laughs> however, making sure that the little guy isn't squeezed out, and making sure that every wildcatter that you help strike oil isn't duped by pressure and phony contracts, and making sure that the hard-working stiff doesn't get taken is what this council is all about. Frankly, the Sherman Antitrust Act sounds, sounds beautiful on paper and in speeches, but in my opinion, the little guy is still on the short end. To be perfectly honest, 
I wish I had a strong argument, Judd, but I don't. All I can speculate is that there's a little bit of evil in all of us. Big business and little business alike. Including politicians, Chuck? <laughs> you said it, Judd, not me. The American way may not be the best, but uh, until somebody comes up with something better, I'll stand by it, I'll fight for it, I'll even die for it. Uh, yeah. 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 Now, why don't we stop all this back slapping and you all come and join me for lunch? Oh, and a nice little beer. Sounds good. I'd like uh, to thank you for the opportunity of allowing me to talk to all these fine people. Yes, I won't be able to make lunch, but thanks anyway. Maybe some other time. You know, um, Tech, I'm not so sure about this Clavel. Detroit police say they haven't got a thing on him. Hmm. Well, that's my worry. How's your problem coming along? Well, I don't know who killed Jake Kirby, but I'm beginning to find out why. Why? Jake was broke, and then all of a sudden he wasn't. Now, wherever he got that money, they forced a deal on him that he couldn't live with, and he didn't. Well, where do you think he got the money? Might be somebody interested in the oil business. <laughs> well, that doesn't tell us much. I'm interested in the oil business. Even Clavel is interested in the oil business. I could name a half a dozen others. Yeah. Well, you did ask me what my problem was. Is starting to look anything like it? The uh, face structure is very close, but his eyes were slightly closer together. Oliver, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, sorry to bother you, but uh, we have some time later on. How important is it? Well, I have some friends coming in from the north next week. Who are they? The politicians, men you ought to meet. How's your time next Monday? I'll make time. How's that look? Um, that's very good. That's... Uh... Very close, except for his nose. His nose was broad, much broader. Say, I didn't know you were such a good artist. If and when we get this character, that'll be good. Mm, well, good luck. See you later, ma'am. See you, Judd. His eyebrow. Which eyebrow? The right one. It, uh... What about it? It was scarred. It had a scar running right through it. About there? That's, that's about it. That's, now you're getting it. to keep that guy outside on watch, eh? No, no, no he, he, all I know is he suspects trouble. He wanted the place guarded. You're lying. I'm not. Do you know where your boy is? He's out doing chores. Not anymore. No. no you couldn't. No, you couldn't. Oh. Yeah, we could have. Oh, I warn you. You talk to Ramsey one more time, and your boy gets what your husband got. Understand? <laughs>
You've been part of the family for quite a while, haven't you, Mike? That's right. How long? Twenty years. Hmm. Come on, sit down. Have some wine. information the police have on you is deadly. You know that? I know. But what I don't know is how you found out all this. Maybe I got no right to ask, but... You have a right to ask what I found out. How I found out is none of your business. How many children do you have, Mike? Five. Three girls and uh, two boys. How's your wife? Uh, what's her name? Linda. Ah, that's right, Linda. Wonderful woman. How is she? She's fine. Good. If and when they put you away, you know that Linda and the children will be well taken care of. How long do you figure it'll get? Maybe two, three years. Provided you don't make a deal to talk. Look, I love my family. Does that answer your question? Completely. I'm glad that we understand each other. I'll be off for now. the rest of us just to save himself. He's willing to go to jail, isn't he? Hmm. But he might still be associated with us. Under these circumstances, a really honorable soldier would be willing to make the final sacrifice. You mean kill himself? See that he does. I would like you to show me in the statutes where the fee for that item is $10. Huh? Get these out to every law enforcement agency in the territory. You listening to me, aren't you? What is it, Amos? You're bleeding me white on these license fees, and I want it stopped. What are you talking about? I'm paying for a doctor's license, dentist's license, veterinarian's license, barber's license. And now you slap ten smackers more on me for when I get my coin-operated punching bag machine. If you'd only stay in one business, you'd only pay one license fee. Sure, and I'd starve to death. Be cheaper for me to offer you a bribe. That's not funny, Amos. Who's laughing? Chief, I think we found the man we're looking for. Where? Ma Riley's rooming house. Why didn't you bring him in? Bring him in? You said never to bust in on anybody without a proper warrant. On suspicion of murder? Hey, Oliver, what about me? We'll talk about it later, right? Right. Right. Mrs. Riley? Oh, Chief Stemp, I'm glad you're here. Sergeant Mendoza told me. Yes, Mrs. Riley, where is he? Haven't seen him all morning. He must still be asleep. What name did he give you? Smith. Just Mr. Smith. Next week on the CBS Late Movie. The Janitor, he's doing this for revenge. 
and arsonist Savage Dogs try to put the bite on Harry O. Richard Boone. These people were not killed by Indians. A case of pin the blame on the red man for Heck Ramsey. A werewolf is a deadly opponent for Darren McGavin as the Night Stalker. All next week on the CBS Late Movie. Somebody would almost involuntarily reach up with his hands and prevent his own suicide. Isn't it hard for a man to hang himself? If that death urge is strong enough, it's surprising what people will do. But it doesn't matter in this case. He didn't hang himself. What are you talking about? You saw it. Oh, he was strung up all right, but he was already dead. You mean somebody rigged it to look like suicide? The way the bruises and the scratches show up on the throat and the neck, there's no doubt in my mind somebody strangled him. Yeah, well, his pockets are empty, but the uh, clothes came from Detroit. So what? Well, we have had several people from Detroit uh, in here the last couple of weeks. If he was strangled, there'd be fingerprints, right? No, too much oil in the human skin. So where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us with uh, no answers, but one very good question. Somebody wanted him dead. Why? Well, that's obvious. They knew we were looking for him. Who? You didn't even have time to get those sketches out of the police station before he was dead. That's true. I just gave him to Tom a little while ago. Nobody knew we were looking for him. What do you mean nobody? Annie was the first one that gave us... Well, Annie didn't kill her own husband. I don't believe that either, but if Annie didn't, who did? The only other ones who saw the sketches were you, me, the constable, and your lady friend who gave... Maybe I better handle this one. She's just another suspect to me. If I can't handle this. to see you again. Can I come in? I don't think either of us has changed his mind about anything, Hick. You want me to ask you again? Come in. Ah. You're leaving. I told you I would be. Not just last night. You're not wasting any time. Why should I? Are you running from your past to your present? I don't understand that. That man you call Mike, he was murdered a little while ago. You expect me to be surprised, don't you? In spite of the people I told you you were dealing with. Outside of the police, there was nobody in this town knew we were looking for him except you. Nobody else even knew what he looked like. Are you accusing me of murder? Well, did you have anything to do with it? No. I thought we had gotten to know each other better than that. Well, who else could have known we were looking for that man? How should I know? I'm not the policeman. You are. All right, Stamp made a sketch from your description. The man was murdered before the copies of those sketches even left the police station. Now, is that what happened, or is there something else? How should I know? Your chief asked me there to give that description. That's why I was there. Well, who else was there? I wasn't paying attention. I suppose people were wandering in and out. What people? I don't know. Give me an idea, give me a name, give me something to hang on to, or I'm going to have to arrest you on suspicion of murder. <sighs> oh, let me think. Uh, oh, yes, there was a man. A man did come in. Yes, uh-huh. He saw the sketch your chief was working on. Who was he? 
I've never seen them before. I don't know. His, uh... He and your chief were friendly, it seemed. How do you figure? They were talking politics and about, uh... About getting together next week. Well, what did Stamp call him? Uh... George. Jo George. No, it was uh, Judd. Judd what? I don't know. You know this, uh, this Judd? Yes, I know him. Is there anything else you want from me? You can hold up on the packing until I get this thing cleaned up. I was planning to leave on the evening stage There coach. is another one in the morning. Are you trying to force me to stay in this town? I'm not trying, Sarah. It's done. Liza? See you a minute. Hello, Peck. Liza, you know if Judd's still in his office? No, I just left him in the council room. He's meeting with the city planners on that newfangled oil refinery that Clavel wants to build here. And Clavel, is he in the meeting? No, he and Judd met separate this morning. All right, thank you. Why did you expose Judd White? If I hadn't given him White, he'd have taken me. So what? You had nothing to do with Mike's death. They don't have anything else. Stop sweating and think it over. Now, Ramsey right now believes that I quit the organization to come over to his side. Now, we've got to keep him believing that, even if it means dumping Judd White. But White can be tied to me. The lesser of two evils. We can do something about you, can't we? You think the old man knows what happened? The old man knows everything. I wouldn't bet against his knowing even before it happened. If Ramsey's the only one who suspects anything, why don't I just get Gus to go out oh, and take care of Oh, don't start to panic. It's probably too late, but maybe you'll learn from your mistakes. You've underestimated Ramsey from the minute you got into this town. He was supposed to be your department. He was my department only because Mike made a mistake. Ramsey knew that oil well fire was a phony. I identified Mike only because I didn't want Ramsey to keep looking further for anything. And then you had to go and kill Mike like some sloppy back alley contract in Detroit. And which is worse, you exposed me as a suspect. Thanks a lot. Is that damn Gus? How did I expect you to do a job when they give you fools to work with? Gus was a machine like Mike was a machine. You're the one who pushed their buttons. Okay. Let White talk, I'll deny it. It's just his word against mine. Is it? Is it, really? What about the wildcatters that Mike made deals with? If Ramsey nails Gus for Mike's murder, which he probably will, it's just a short trip from Gus to you. I don't care about Ramsey or anything like that. What are you going to tell the old man? You know anybody who ever lied to him? Anybody alive, that is. There are a great many ways to tell a thing. You believe you, Sarah. You could help me. Why should I? Because the old man won't be around forever. I'm next in line, Sarah. You know that. I'd remember you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'd remember. And you cut my throat when you remembered that I heard you say that. You got a gun? I don't carry guns, you know that. Get one from Gus. What for? If Ramsey gets white, he gets you. If you're dead, Ramsey... Can't go any further. <laughs> no. Not much choice, Charlie. If Ramsey doesn't get you, the old man will. Go ahead. Have your drink.
Well, we, uh, we could build it southeast of town here near Hutton's Flats. I don't think that would interfere with anything. Judge? Uh, yeah, hello, Hank. Uh, I've got to see you. Well, right now? It's important. Oh, um, well, we'll take this up later then. Thank you, John. So important. Judd, were you in the police station yesterday? Police station? Oh, yes, I think so. Why? Well, did you notice that sketch that Stamp was making? Sketch? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Uh, don't tell Stamp, but I didn't think it was much good. Did you get a good look at it? No, not really. You're sure of that? Like, what's this all about? Well... The man in that sketch was murdered a couple hours ago. Murdered? Uh, well, who was he? He's the one that killed Big Jack Kirby. But why? Well, Jed, I'm going to get to that a little later. Uh, right now, what's really important is that, that man was murdered because somebody knew we were after him. Now, outside the police department, there were only three people in this town who knew. There's Annie Kirby. <laughs> you don't suspect Annie Kirby, do you? No, we don't. Well, who are the other two? There's a woman named Detweiler. And you. Was it you, Judd? Heck, you don't believe that? Well, I talked to the Detweiler woman. I don't think she did it. Well, heck, um, maybe it's about time you told me what you do believe. You see Clavel today? What's he got to do with anything? He's from Detroit. The man who was murdered was from Detroit. Heck, there are thousands of people that come from Detroit. Well, what did you see him about? I didn't say I saw him. Well, did you or didn't you? No. I saw Elijah Miller on the way over here. He said that you met with Clavel today. Now, is Elijah lying? Or are you lying, Judd? Heck, do you remember me? I'm the guy who only a year ago fought tooth and toenail for this town, the people, the consul, and the police department to hire the best lawman I ever knew, or ever expect to know for that matter. I demanded that they hire Heck Ramsey. I won't forget. It's eating my guts out right now. Heck, I'm not a murderer. There are other people behind me. And they're not going to like what you're doing right now. Clavel? There are other people behind him. Well, what do you suggest I do? Retire, heck. Retire with all the money you'll ever need. <laughs> you that deep in? Heck, <sighs> I never thought I was corruptible. I mean, that happened to other people, but it couldn't happen to me. But it did. Yes, it did. They promised me money, success, political power, everything I ever dreamed of. Now you're trying to buy me. That's right. There's no other choice. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I do have another choice. Let's go. We're going to charge him. Conspiracy, accessory after the fact of murder. I'll take him over and book him. Tell Mendoza to pick up Clavel and his sidekick. Clavel just rented a buckboard and rode out of town. When? Which way? North, about ten minutes ago.
you are guilty. You will plead guilty. They'll hang me. Perhaps. Nevertheless, you will assume the entire responsibility for what happened. You will neither receive nor ask for any assistance from us. Is that clear? I need a lawyer. The best you can get, please. You will manage that for yourself. There will be no connection between us. Do you understand? Charles. Do you understand? You know, a license fee is just another kind of tax. I don't know why I should pay more taxes than anyone else in this town. Because you got your fingers in more pies than anybody else in this town. Well, the least you can do as my good friend is to put in a gracious word for me with Stamp. No. Stamp's got this idea that license fees and taxes will help the police department pay for itself. I want to thank you, Mr. Ramsey for permitting me to visit my nephew. You have that right. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Rights are meaningless without compassionate officials. Well, this is quite a blow to me, as you can imagine. The boy had every encouragement, every advantage. I suppose there is no explanation. Well, I think there is an explanation if you've got the patience to wait around till you can see it. Despite your success in this matter, you, you seem to be not satisfied? No, sir, I'm not satisfied with catching them small fish. Oh, I see. Uh, this is all fascinating, and I wish I had more time, but I believe my stagecoach is leaving in a few minutes. Uh, thank you again, and goodbye. Almost sounded like you two were making an appointment.
chưa đến đâu chị vào trong kia chỗ trong thành phố Hồ Chí Minh bị vào rồi chứ còn đến đấy thì chị chưa đến không lúc đến đâu chị không vào tại bố mẹ chị bảo là thôi mẹ sai ngất đi rồi xong rồi thôi mẹ ở nhà đi
thì 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 lại trái ngược lại thằng em út thì lại ham chơi anh nhưng mà nó 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 nghe là mẹ các thứ mà nhưng mà nó đang kiểu ham chơi ấy. mẹ phải biết là con 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 em chị nó không nó không nó không nấu cơm xong rồi nó gọi điện về nó mách mẹ chồng mà nó <cười> béo là gì thằng đấy mách ấy mách là gì vậy mách để cho mẹ mẹ nó gọi điện lên nói chuyện với con em chị thằng này nhào chó ừ mẹ. thế nó mới cái cái chuyện vui để kể thế mẹ nó gọi có Ô, mẹ nó cũng ngáo không? mẹ nó gọi điện lên mẹ nó bảo là ôi thế sao hôm nay con không nấu cơm à Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại mọi người nhé à, Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại mọi người những video lần sau